Hi there, and welcome to Seven Deadly Sins. This is a wonderfully simple looking module with a great deal of depth behind its strategy and creation. To start, we have seven differently colored buttons that correspond to a specific sin on the arrow chart here, them being lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, and pride. You'll need to press each button exactly once, and it not only has to follow the arrow chart, meaning that from pride to lust, lust to gluttony, but gluttony can't go to wrath, but it also has to be adjacent to a circle already that's been pressed. So we can start from any circle in this to click, to start off, let's say, wrath, for example. But we can only now go to greed or gluttony. Lucky for us, wrath leads to gluttony, but it doesn't lead to greed, so we'll press gluttony. I'll run an example of this just to get the idea of how to do this manual. Um, gluttony, for example, we have the options of sloth and greed, but if we go to sloth, we'll skip over greed. So I try to obey the outside here as much as I can, just because it's simpler to look at. So let's try greed, then sloth. <sighs> We've already used Wrath, so from Sloth we'll take our skip over to Envy, and then Pride and Lust to finish it off. So the general strategy there is pick a circle that works, follow it up, make sure that you don't pinhole yourself into one of these diagrams. Now understanding this diagram I think is really important to navigating the module because looking at this can look like a bunch of chicken scratch. Obviously there's the outside ring which forms a regular heptagon, seven-sided shape. And then there's this mess on the inside, and it looks sort of like, sort of symmetrical, but what's, what's going on with all these arrows? Well, these are the shapes that are being formed by the arrow patterns. If we swap back and forth really quick, there they are. This blue shape is a heptagram, and this green shape is also a heptagram. We'll look at something really quick called the uh, Schleifle numbers, which are uh, description of the vertices, seven in this point, and their turning point, or which vertice they connect to. So you can see that the one here represents that the vertice connects directly to the vertice next to it. So one, 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 heptagon. If we turn it to seven, two, we get the blue shape here, which is vertice two, 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 two. two. And the third shape in there is also a regular heptagram in three, 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 three. So these are the shapes that the arrow paths form. But why is it a little confusing then? Well, if you look at Wrath, you'd expect the vertices to go one, two, three, but it only goes one, two, and then coming from Lust, then going to Gluttony. So it's one, two, four, because uh, for the arrow's sake of describing it, uh, the heptagon is clockwise then. The 7-2 heptagram is clockwise. This way. Rather, uh, this way, rather. I can't draw it. These arrows are confusing me as well. And the 7-3 heptagram here is not clockwise because it doesn't follow this. It's counterclockwise. That's what makes this module a little tricky, is you have one, two, four for every single connection. So envy, pride, gluttony, pride, lust, pride, lust, greed, lust, gluttony, sloth, skipping over greed for pride specifically. So that's a little bit of understanding how the module works, understanding how the flowchart works. Now that that's understood, let's try it from an expert perspective instead of just looking at the module. So we have lust, greed, Pride, Envy, Wrath, Sloth, and Gluttony. From here, we'll choose a starting point that works. And not all starting points work, as we've said before. So if you look at Lust, we need a connector of uh, Greed or Gluttony, which we do. So we can do Lust, Gluttony, Greed, following the outside. Do we have Sloth? Yes, we do. Four for Sloth. Wrath, or Rarth as I wrote. Wrath is five. Envy is six. 
and pride is seven. So in this instance, we had it because we started at lust, we happened to get a path that just so happened to run through every single one of these uh, in an adjacent manner. So we have lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, oh. wrath, envy, and pride. Just so happened to work out nicely in a circle shape. Let's let's choose a situation, or let's try to choose, choose a situation where it won't always work out nicely. Here's one. <clears throat> we can't choose greed here to start out. If we choose greed, uh, we our only options are gluttony and lust, both of which uh, have the vertices going to greed instead of away from them. So we'll need to obey this if we're choosing a starting point, like lust can lead to greed, but not envy. Envy can lead to lust, um, but not sloth, for example. Just be careful about how you're choosing them. Uh, I'll do one more, I'll do a few more demonstrations here on my thought process for choosing them. And then we'll uh, review how the module is put together, because I think that's really interesting. A lot of these choices, as you've seen, are pretty intentional. Because Seven Deadly Sins, Heptagon, Heptagram, Heptagram, all these color cycles. Wonderful stuff. Pride, we can go to Wrath, no, or Sloth, yes. What I try to do is look for adjacent colors, because that makes it easier on me, specifically. I think, um, let's say we go to Lust and Greed. Where can Greed go? We have slow, we have Gluttony, no, and Envy. So we can go Lust, Greed. Greed doesn't go to Envy. So we wouldn't want to go Lust, Greed. That would be a dead end. Uh, let's try, let's try Envy. Envy goes to Lust, goes to Greed. Now we have Sloth as an option. But from Sloth, we'll go to Pride or Gluttony, and we'll get stuck. So we're making progress, but you want to have this thinking of, does my path lead to a dead end? Let's try um, Gluttony. I think we'll have this, most of the same issue. Let's try Wrath here, then. Wrath leads to Pride. Leads to Sloth. Leads to Envy. I could see a path here, so let's try Wrath. Pride, sloth, envy, lust, gluttony, greed. Try another one. You can see our circle formation up here is pretty simple because we had a correct start point. A little trickier here. There were a lot that we couldn't start from necessarily. Uh, you can also choose a circle and track it backwards, so to speak. So sloth goes to greed, goes to gluttony. And you can see that you'd want to starting point to be gluttony just because if we can expand the circle out we can get more options then we have envy pride uh lust wrath and that'll be a completion so gluttony greed sloth yeah. following this around perfectly we don't have the option of wrath so we skip over to envy follow the circle around pride lust and then down to wrath making sure that lust had a path to wrath or else we'd have to uh reconform the last few but since we had a strong beginning, it was a lot easier and give us a little more freedom. <clears throat> I do want to talk about uh, a few module design interesting things before we solve this last one. Uh, these symbols here are not on the manual itself, but rather they are from this cute little chart. Uh, these are simplified versions of a little table on Pinterest which relate to the seven uh, princes of hell, which are supposed to uh, be the protectors or um, embodiments of these sins. So for greed, we have Maimon, Sloth is Belphegor, Lust is Asmodeus, Pride, Lucifer, Gluttony, Beelzebub, Anger, Satan, with that little pentagram in the star there, as he's no as in the circle there, as he's known for, uh, and Envy, Leviathan, with that uh, counterclockwise circle going in on itself. The last puzzle here is that I didn't understand how the buttons were colored uh, because there's a lot of intentional design here, but usually red would be wrath or gluttony or orange would be pride or purple would be envy, you know, colors that would make sense in the greater scheme of things. Well, just, just take a look at this image for a second. Yeah, 
I think that speaks for itself. These are based on the SpongeBob characters, so SpongeBob, Squidward, Sandy, Plankton, <laughs> etc., and so on. Um, that's about it for the module. We'll solve one more just so you can uh, go through as many of these as possible because this is an open orientation puzzle. There's no right one way to solve it, and it can have multiple solutions uh, necessarily. Let's look at greed. Greed goes to pride. Pride goes to sloth. Sloth goes to envy. Envy goes to lust. Lust goes to gluttony. We don't have wrath, so let's not. We have gluttony. Gluttony goes to envy, I guess. Envy goes to neither of those. Start at lust, we'll go to not oh, wrath, I guess. Uh, wrath goes to gluttony. It's a weird backwards pentagram there. It goes to envy, envy goes to greed, greed goes to pride, and pride goes to sloth. Wow, we're tracing the backwards pentagram there. So I think path was lust, wrath, gluttony, envy. Greed, pride, sloth. <sighs> yes. You can see the path we took there was pretty non-standard. We're following this heptagram there. But we did have one of the shapes in its totality. We just had to look a little closer at the inner machinations of it. Uh, that's Seven Deadly Sins. I think it's an absolutely wonderful module. It's simple. It's complex in its design. It has a lot of thought behind it. Uh, uh, I like it a lot. And I hope you do too, and I hope you've learned something from watching this. And thank you so much for watching this. Uh, hopefully now you've learned a little more, some, you've learned something a little more about uh, Seven Deadly Sins.